Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into Clayshare Live. I am Jessica Putnam Phillips, and tonight we have Diamond Core Tools, a trimming bowls and cup demo with Nikolai. Uh, it's kind of a double header for trimming with Diamond Core Tools because in this broadcast right now, which is our free public broadcast that we do for everybody, everywhere, anyone can watch. Uh, Nikolai will be doing the demo and he's gonna trim the things he threw last week. If you missed that, go watch the replay. And then directly after that at 6.15 p.m. Eastern in our private broadcast, that's our prime time broadcast for premium members of Clayshare, I am gonna be trimming with my favorite diamond core tools, trimming tools, and we're gonna be making fancy feet. I always get asked how I do my feet. I'm gonna show everybody next. So we have some really great things all month long with Diamond Core Tools being our sponsor because it's Clay Share Month for Diamond Core Tools. So for us, it's Diamond Core Tool Month. And they have this really great Clay Share combo that I wanna share with everybody that you can get for free. Yep, that's right, for free. So in order to get this, you buy $100 worth of Diamond Core Tools products on their website, you add that to your cart. You put the Clay Share combo in your cart and then you use the code Clay Share 23, all capitals at checkout, and then this will be free. And you get the fabulous little rib and two of these amazing little sanders right here. I love these. These are great for the bottoms of your pots. So you get this set for free only for August though, so don't miss out. We are also doing another giveaway tonight, like we're doing all month long. And tonight we're gonna be giving away winner's choice one of the four piece extra small trimming tools or the four piece extra large trimming tool you choose and to enter our giveaways just go to clayshare.com no purchase necessary and sign up for our emails that's it that's all you got to do okay uh, that's all the business i have we did put a new class out last week if you missed that go check out making a it's actually building a modular vent system class so be sure to watch that on clayshare app or clayshare.com all right Whew. That's enough. Paid the bills. Let's go see what Nikolai is up to. Hey, hey, Nikolai, how you doing? Oh, hello, Jessica. Hello, everyone. To uh, join in Diamond Core. Um, today we're gonna be doing trimming. So, uh, if you joined us last week, we threw a couple bowl. We threw a bowl, a vase, some cups. Uh, we covered kind of the basic, basic uh, like throwing techniques and stuff. Got a wide variety. Today we're going to be doing all, we're going to be trimming all that. So I'll see how much I can get through. I'm going to be starting with a cup. We'll do a bowl. And then if we've got time, we'll do a base. I'm going to be showing uh, as many of our trimming tools as possible. I'm also going to be using one of our new sponges. So this is the extra soft sponge. It's going to be coming out in the next month or so. Uh, so this, as opposed to last week where I was using the rough, kind of more spongy sponge, this is much softer. It's extremely fine. Uh, you could kind of compare it to a chamois, but it is very spongy. And I'm going to use that to do all the finishing around my piece. Um, so you'll see me kind of grabbing towards that. And then uh, on one of these pieces, I'm going to show my process for applying slip on the outside. And then in a couple of weeks, when we come and trim and carve everything, you'll see how I carve that slip away. Uh, so before long, we will get started here. Um, so when I trim, I, I go right on the wheel head and I will use the method of I've done this before. I recommend trying it. It's definitely a little scary at first. Um, you're going to lose a couple pieces. It's okay. You just kind of got to get over that learning curve. <clears throat> Once you get the hang of it, I, I always just recommend it because it works really well and you can trim the whole piece. Uh, and it really, it really kind of just stuck on there. So I'll use the sponge. I just wet the rim a little bit. I'll wet the wheel head a little bit. I'm going to put the piece down and I kind of move it around just to build up a little bit of a slurry. And you feel it kind of get sticky. And then um, I let go. So feel it kind of gripping up. Tap center. Uh, and some of these pieces, I don't worry too much about the rim, which is touching the wheel. I want to center kind of the middle of the piece right here or closer to the foot. That's going to be like my, my ground zero or zero point. Um, so this one, you can tell it's a little bit off on the rim, but it actually feels pretty good, like right here. Uh, and so I will lock her down here. 
So I give a sort of a firm, a firm tap. And then uh, one thing I've been doing recently is just for extra insurance, I just sort of seal the seal the bottom rim. Uh, it doesn't, you don't need much here, but if you're nervous about it coming off, I've noticed that um, even with some like extra dry pieces or sometimes you'll get something that you're just not super confident in. Just sort of squeeze that rim. Uh, I use the back of one of our trimming tools and that really sealed it in. So um, it's very reliable. Of course, saying that this might come off, but um, it, it really does work well when you get it stuck on. Okay, so first things first is I have, um, I probably have about a half an inch of clay, maybe a little bit more on the bottom of this. Last time um, when I was thrown, I was talking about leaving a little bit extra clay just because I like to trim a taller foot. You have a little bit more to work with. Um, so the first thing I do is I'm going to use our T1. Um, this is probably my go-to for the majority of the work I do. Uh, half dome. I'm just going to go down right in the middle and kind of clear out the inside of the foot. And then I'll figure out how much room you have to work with. And then before that, even I just do sort of one, one pass over everything to clean it up. And um, because when when this is cut off, it might not be level. So I I go through everything and just re-level it. And it's really important when you're trimming to be very hold the tool very firmly. So sometimes I'll see people just sort of like letting the tool drag on the piece. And you'll get either chattering or you'll get bumps up and down or who knows. I like to actually hold these tools more, more perpendicular to the surface. And the clay is actually going to be cutting, you know, coming in almost at a 90 degree angle to the blade. Uh, and a lot of the time when I'm moving across, I'm actually cutting using the side of the tool rather than the front there. Uh, and anytime you get a real rough patch, just use the smallest part of the blade as possible. And what I mean by that is mostly just the corner. So if you have a wide surface area touching your piece, it's going to bump and bounce all over the place. Uh, if you have a, like a very tiny little spot or corner, then it's going to be easier to work through like an uneven or rough section. And I do use, I'm, um, resting both my hands on my knees. I mainly hold it in my right hand and then I do use my left hand sort of to like help guide very precise movements. And I just want to remind everybody that I am moderating the broadcast. So if you have any questions for Nikolai while he's working, go ahead and type them in wherever you're watching and I will relay your question to, to Nikolai. Okay, so I like to just sort of clean it up. We get a nice even part. Now we'll work down in the middle. Go out about that far. Uh, and so when I am trimming down, I will tap the bottom. If you've seen this before, uh, it, it takes a little bit again getting used to again because you need to just listen to the clay. But again, it works very well. It's really pretty reliable once you learn what to listen to. So right now, it kind of feels like you're tapping on a piece of wood. Um, and as we remove clay, you'll hear that start to sound more and more like maybe a piece of cardboard and then just like a piece of paper on top, uh, kind of like when you're tapping a drum. You'll hear it here. It's not quite as loud. It sounds more like maybe a piece of cardboard, piece of paper on top. So I'm going to back off and be gentle and maybe just take off a very thin one. There we go. So now it's very thin. You can tell because it's just this kind of very uh, echoey, echoey tap. 
Um, so that's kind of my the base of the foot there. And now I just have all this clay to use to sort of sort of trim a foot into. So I'm going to make it a little bit wider. Take that down. Take a little bit off top. So we had a question. Do you ever break the bottom when you're tapping? Um, so once I'll do it often enough where as you get close, you hear it starting to change. And then I tap a lot softer. Um, sometimes what will happen is you'll tap and then it will it'll dent the bottom. So sometimes it's harder to like totally break through than what you think. But every once in a while you'll get it. You'll actually like dent it. And then I, and then I stop. So um you, you will actually feel it a little bit if i if i tap this very hard it would probably dent the bottom so i'm going to leave uh my goal with this is to sort of leave like a, a chunky foot in the right place and then i'll use one of our feature tools to sort of clean it up um before that i will use the Somewhere we've got a T8. So the T8 opposed to the T1, you just have this very flat wedge surface on top. And I'm going to use this to sort of go down, clean the rest of this up. I do the middle first because then I know like this is the bottom of the inside. So I'm going to match this level with over here. And I know like the bottom of my cup, you have that little bit of curve. So I'm going to max, I'm going to go a little bit lower on the outside here. So right now, the inside of the foot and the outside of the foot, um, they're very similar. The outside's a little bit lower. OK. Uh, when I go down the side, I know my walls are a little less than a quarter of an inch. And so I'm going to take off a you know, decent amount of material right here and just kind of go straight down. When I'm going onto the side, I'll switch rather than holding like a pen or pencil. I do switch sometimes to holding it more like this. And I'll actually put my finger all the way up on that blade. Um, it's thin enough to cut clay very well, but it's not actually like a sharp blade so as long as i'm not pushing on it too hard it's okay and we'll go straight down and since the rim of the piece is a little bit off i sort of feather back or sort of fade off um, as i get towards the bottom here and just kind of you just kind of let the tool do a little bit of its thing so you're sort of feathering it off Uh, we do get questions sometimes about like how to prevent chattering and uh, it's kind of tough to answer because a lot of it is by feel if i wanted to i could probably start this tool chattering and then but if it was chattering i didn't want to typically what i recommend is uh emphasize the pressure on one of the corners so it's kind of like stop pressing this big wide flat surface anytime you have a very large surface um, or blade kind of cut into your clay surface, you're more likely to get some chattering. So just sort of tilt this tool and cut just with the corner, and you can sort of pass through that chattering and clean it up. Okay, so that's pretty even. I'm going to switch to the B301. So this is one of our feature tools. I use this one a lot just to sort of clean up my feet. Um, and a lot of the time I'll make like a big chunky foot, you know, wherever I like it. Um, and actually, before I use that one, I'll use the 302, which is our rectangular. So I'll just put the foot like kind of where I want it. And then these tools are great to come in and actually just smooth it out. So 
And what's nice is no matter what you do, you're always going to end up with the same shape of the foot every time. So we had a question. Do you throw a little thicker than normal to account for trimming away? Uh, I do, yeah. Um, and I think, so last time, if you watched the throwing video, I do, at some point there, I, I kind of showed, I, I cut it off way below where I need to, especially when I'm throwing off the pump. I like to leave a lot of clay on the bottom. This one had a good three quarters inch, half inch, just because I like, I like a tall foot. Um, and then I like just having more material to work with. So that's just me. If you don't leave as much clay, then um, you can kind of dial back on the feature tools or just do the same thing, but less. So that's the rectangular foot, for example. And if we want to change it to a triangle. So these tools I recommend going very slow. I'm just sort of letting it think at its own pace. There we go. So I like the 301 only because it I usually have a triangular foot. And then to get the bottom of the foot very smooth, rounded, all at the same size, this just gives me the exact same foot every time. And then right on the outside here, I do want to sort of clean up the outside face and I'll use the, some of our small tools. Um, this is a fun one that I'll use. It's the hook tip, the 104. This I'm just going to sort of bring in. Okay, so I think we'll leave that one there. Um, and I think this is a good one to actually show a little bit of slip on. So at this point, I've kind of got it all trimmed up the way I like. I'll do one more pass, maybe with a little bit larger 203, just on the outside. And you can tell the bottom here is already starting to dry out a little bit. That's okay though. Um, I like trimming just a, a hair dry. Um, it's not like nowhere near bone dry or anything like that, but sometimes you'll get just a like a, a cleaner cut. Okay. Um, so I'm going to leave this spinning and slow it down just a little bit. Okay. And then use my good old uh, slip jar. So this I've just been perpetually adding, adding slip to. Um, it's like your sourdough starter where you just keep, you keep it going forever. Um, it smells great, but it's great slip. So I'll just make this with a little bit of B mix, um, water it down, get the consistency that consistency that I like, and then uh, add a little bit of stain or the color in it so it's about right. And so this is going to turn out a very bright red. Um, and I'll get a little bit of a brush here. And so when I'm doing this, I'll just, I kind of goop it on at first and then use a brush to spread it up. The thickness you can play with. Sometimes if it's too thin, you'll see through to the clay, and I'll add one of the layers. And then at this point, uh, you can't really touch it because it's wet. And so I'm going to use a blowtorch to dry this really quick. 
And I won't talk while I'm doing this because it's a little bit loud. But what I really care about doing is right now this slip is very, you can see it's shiny on the outside. Uh, I'm not quite sure if you can see it in the camera, but uh, you want to look and see when it's shiny. And then I'm going to move the blowtorch up and down until, uh, until that shininess sort of goes away. It'll become sort of a matte surface. Um, and then that's when you know it's just about dry enough to kind of, kind of come clean up a little bit. So there's a question about how dry is your clay when you trim it? Oh, I'm sorry, was that a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to do that first and I'll ask you again? Oh, uh, I can hear you better. Okay. It was, the, the question was how dry is your clay when you trim it? Oh, so I, I do like it a little bit drier um, than normal. It's drier than leather hard for sure. It's kind of in between leather hard and bone dry. Uh, a lot of the time you can like cut, I think you can get a little bit cleaner cut. It's not where you're getting like uh, shavings necessarily. It's kind of at the point just before you get shavings. Okay, so and you'll see in the middle of this piece, it's turning, it's getting lighter. So that part is drying out. Uh, I'm just trying to get this thicker edge. Sometimes I'll switch it down a little bit. So one thing to look out for when you're, if you use the method of suctioning the piece to the wheel head, and then you come and blow torch it, you're actually heating up the air inside the inside the piece and if you have a small thing like this if you put too much heat too quick you can get it to expand and actually pop off um, and so i'm just going to kind of back off a little bit uh, i've had it where i've actually like kind of blown through the bottom of it if it gets too thin uh, if you have too much pressure so just watch out for that a lot of the time you'll hear it pop and it just sort of splits up a little bit um, it looks like i'm okay now so. So right now it's dry slip all around here. And then I'm gonna use the, it's a small tool, so it's a T102. And I'm just gonna clean up the edge. And so a lot of the time when you're applying, when you're using a brush to apply slip, you it's hard to get a very clean line sometimes. And so I, I just like doing this, make sure you have a nice clean line. So I had a question, what did you use to stain your slip? Uh, so this one, I think it was just like a red stain. I got it, I think I got it from a studio or I found it somewhere. I don't have a great answer to that one. It was just a red. Um, just a mason stain? Yeah, just a mason stain. Um, I don't even remember, I think it was like, it wasn't like a copper red or so like apple red or something like that. Um, and it kind of looks purple on here right now. It's got a little bit of purplish, but it comes out just like a really nice bright red. Um, and then I don't, I don't really measure it out. I kind of go by, kind of go by feel. Um, but yeah, you'll you'll notice when it's a very solid consistent. Okay, so both edges are cleaned up, and then I'm going to use the T101, and I'm going to just add. I like adding a few decorative lines. A couple on the bottom. Okay, let's blow that down. Got one cup done here. And then to get it off, you just sort of pull it off. This one loosened up. Uh, and so this is kind of what we look like coming off the wheel. When you do really flatten it on like this, it, it does get a little flat. So I'm going to use the fine sponge here. 
clean this. Uh, I sort of wet the whole rim and then I'm, I bend the sponge like that and sort of pinch the edges because you get a very sharp edge on here and I'm trying to just remove that sharpness. You get a nice comfortable rim. Just like that. So that'll clean up a little bit better. There you have it. So that is one cup. And then uh, I'm going to make sure to wrap this up right away. So if we want to add any little details here in a couple of weeks, it'll still be sort of that uh, chocolate um, dryness that we've talked about before for perfect for carving. I'll wrap this one up. So unfortunately, the so this big base I made last time is still a little wet up top. I'm going to hold off for now on that, but I'll do the bowl. Um, so this is the bowl from last time. If you remember, I had some trouble getting it off the wheel, and it got a little wonky. But once it firmed up a little bit, I sort of just uh, pushed it back into roundness. Uh, and we'll see what it looks like. The rim is probably going to be a little bit off, but I think the bottom will be okay. And then just before I put it down, um, using the wood ribs on the inside definitely makes like a nice even surface. And so that's what I want to match on the outside of the piece. So I talked a little bit about it while throwing. I make sure the inside is all nice and smooth, how I want it, the right shape. I don't care too much about the outside. We'll fix this up when we're trimming. Um, this rim is the thinnest part for sure, so it's about, oh, I don't even know, probably about like three millimeters thick, and it's that thin to about there, and then I can feel it starting to get thicker, so I'm just going to keep that in mind when I'm trimming. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom, which is fine because it's probably going to be a little bit off, so same, same method, what the rim is. Might have gotten too, oh, that's too tight. So sometimes if you don't have enough water, it sticks too quickly and you actually can't center it. So I'll just re re wet it. Okay, so I think I'll leave it there. Uh, it's not too bad, you know. I'm gonna, Tap that down lightly, and then we'll seal the edge. Um, so if you look closely, the rim is actually not too bad. It's not as off as I thought. There's one, it's a little bit wonky somewhere right here, but I think I have enough play there. We'll just trim through it. So we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to seal the, seal the rim. OK. So for a piece like this, I'm going to switch to using some of our larger tools. This is the T201. It's basically a larger version of our half dome. Um, I like the half dome shape just because of that corner and the swooping blade. So I'll use it to just sort of do a pass over everything. Same sort of like cleanup situation where I just want to remove any unevenness. It's always tricky, especially right at the corner here. You always end up just from fingers and grabbing it. You get like the, the chunkiest part. One thing I do want to try as well at it is uh, you do have the arc shaver now. And I've seen a couple people actually use like a shaver or something to help clean stuff up while trimming. So I'm going to just try using this um, just because it is 
it's very rough on the outside here and it might help just sort of clean it up. Which it is. So all I'm doing is trying to get rid of all this like really messy stuff on the outside. Rather than trying to like trim through that and be really steady, I'm just gonna push the arc shaver against it and smooth it out. So works pretty nicely, empty that out. Okay, so now I actually have a clean surface to start with. Uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing as last time. I'm gonna start in the middle and sort of see how much I have to work with. I don't have as much clay on the bottom of this. Uh, if you remember, it was the very last thing I threw out of a big hump. And so it was kind of like whatever's left on the bottom, bottom is what you got. Uh, we'll see. I don't have a ton here. So I can already tell it's it's getting pretty thin. Um, so what that means is I can't I can't really go down too much more. I'll probably do one more little pass here just to flatten it out. Uh, and then I gotta leave it. And so that means I don't have a whole lot to work with for a foot. What I want to be careful is I don't trim this surface down any further what will happen is then if i trim too much off here then the actual middle will be the, the lowest point and you'll get a rocky bowl um, so i want to make sure i definitely have enough clay to leave the clay so i'm going to go a little bit further out stay in there And I'm already going through, so sometimes that happens. You'll go through. Uh, you can see that little crack thing. So I'm going to keep going. We'll pretend like that's not there. Uh, and provided it doesn't completely like fall out, I'll, I might be able to sell it later. So I'm going to leave leave the edge of my. It's foot a planter. Back. You could put drainage. It's a planter. Like that. That's fine. I'd, <laughs> Everyone's got a um, So this does, it. if anything, more than anything, this will happen where I try and go very thin and I don't necessarily go through the, the very middle, but somewhere along here, I sort of miscalculate the inside fullness of it, the inside curvature, and you get a little thin. Um, but as long as I don't trim that anymore, I'll be able to sort of push it back in place. And once you glaze the inside, it'll either be okay or danger. Uh, I do want to leave this for the foot, and then I do know it is still a bowl shape. So on the outside of this, I can go down a little bit. And then right here, so right where I've left, that's kind of that bumpy spot that I mentioned earlier. And just to get through that, I'm going to use the very corner of this, and I might actually switch to. Um, like a very pointy corner tool. So I want to sort of just even that out as best as I can by using a sharp corner. So I'll do as thin, as fine of a cut as possible. And that way, the unevenness, you can kind of tell it's it's better here, but uneven here. So you just sort of trim through that as best you can. And once you're through it, it does get a little bit easier. Well, in here, I'm going to use the 
for the square foot again. And just because we have a sensitive inside of the foot, I'm not going to do too much in there. Small tools just to clean this up. And then for the outside of kind of a larger piece, our T204, it's this hammer shape. Uh, it's similar to like kind of the the large like avocado shaped or pear shaped tools has a little bit more of a corner to it. I like using this for going up and down, like a big bowl like this, especially. And so because it came through there earlier and sort of use that corner to even that out, it's a lot easier to come back with a large blade or a large uh, sort of cutting surface on the bowl outside. And then as I approach the bottom, I really back off a little bit. I'm just trying to really take off the outer layer, not really trim it down too much. Uh, and you can do the same tapping trick on the outside. It doesn't work quite as well. So I'm usually a little bit more careful. We had a really good question, and uh, and I know the answer, but I'm going to let you answer it. Um, do people have to sharpen their diamond core tools, trimming tools? Oh, no, you don't. Easy answer. Um, you don't, so because it's all just very thin metal, you're, it's not going to get dull. It's always the same sharpness. Um, eventually, you'll completely use up the metal. It'll This will actually like pop apart, and then you just put a new blade on. Uh, but yeah, no sharpening. Nothing. Um, that's also why I like trimming a little bit drier because you're not really going to dull your blade. Like a, it's still very sharp and you're still going to cut the clay very well. Um, and you get a very precise cut. I like to say they're self sharpening. I don't have to worry about it at all. At all, yeah, nothing. Okay, so we'll leave the outside there. And a little bit more clean up on the foot. Just for fun, I'll use the uh, the trio four is like a very it's a very short, small foot almost just right for like exactly this type of piece. And so I like this one because it, it's actually asymmetrical. So it's got a sort of a sharper flat side on the outside and then the inside of this big swooping curve. So it's great for little bowls where you want to keep that outside edge sort of straight up and down. And then the inside you want to kind of even out. Again, be very careful on the inside not to disturb it. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not going to mess around with slip on this, but I will add a couple decorative lines here. So 
what's fun about even just adding like a little groove like this, if you use a transparent glaze or even like a stain layer or something, it will pick up on these very thin, slight lines and you'll just get a very easy, easy pattern to do. Like that. Okay, so we'll call this one. You can see there's my little crack right there. Uh, it's honestly probably repairable if you really wanted to. Um, and then to get this one off, it's probably stuck. I'm just going to fold it and pull slightly towards me. It might be very stuck. This is a good example of uh, how well the method does it. Um, so one thing we'll see. So last time I did show, we have a needle tool. I'm gonna just spin it and stick that needle tool under the edge just a little bit. Oh, sorry, pop it off. So that happens very, very gentle. Uh, so you can see right there, just by trimming, the bottom of the bowl got a little, uh, it's like an inverse little dent in there. So I'm going to first fix up the rim. So the same sort of clean up the rim on this. And then on the inside, I'm gonna use the other end of the sponge, so the really round part. Uh, it's not gonna be super wet, and I'm just gonna see if I can like gently sort of push that back in place. And I'll even set it down. So I won't mess with it too much, but I think with even a tiny little piece of clay would be fixable or it'll become a planter. Uh, overall though, like not a, not a bad shape. All this other clay um, was cleaned up and then just a slight little foot on there. Um, and then here's those little marks. When you're right side up, they're almost like little shelves that'll catch that glaze and just makes a really interesting, interesting design. Okay, so there's a bowl for you. Um, I will, we might be able to even carve this one next time. Um, just because this surface is perfect for doing some of the like relief carving on. Um, so again, I'm going to wrap this one up and save it as best as I can. Okay, I know we have a few, maybe 10, 15 minutes left. So I'm going to give a shot at trimming uh, this larger vase, which I'll adjust this for. So there's something larger, uh, it's kind of everything that I've talked about so far, but just a little bit more of it. So the inside, I just kind of give a quick feel. I start to get a little bit thicker right around here. So I know from here down, I just want to do sort of one pass, take off the outer layer. And then from here, from here up is where I have a lot of clay to go through in the bottom. Looking on the inside, the bottom is about that big, so my foot will be just beyond that. And so, with something like this, I it does still work to suction it on. I just make sure it's I just make sure it's really on there. So, spread it around, and then I'll even just put a little bit of water on the outside. Center. Okay. 
And with something like this, I'm really trying to center it kind of right here. So you'll notice the bottom is a little bit off. That'll be okay. And then we're going to trim through the rest of this on top. Okay. And then this one, I want to make sure I'm smacking it. Whenever I do something large like this, I'm not hitting in the very middle. I'm just sort of tapping the very outer rim. And that's what you want to seal. And then we will use a tool there. So I definitely want to make sure this is sealed on there. Feels pretty good. Okay. Uh, same story. I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to be using mostly the large tools for this. And this is a little bit softer on top. So I just want to be careful that I don't all of a sudden sink in. Another reason I like trimming a little bit firmer is because you can put you can put a little bit more pressure on the tool in the blade and hold it. Um, you can be a little bit more aggressive without the risk of just sort of cutting in. So everyone sort of experienced that accidental slip or where you catch a corner wrong and you just cut a whole piece out. So more likely to happen when you have softer clay. Try not to do it on this. So one sort of clean up on everything. So something to keep in mind is when you do have something tall or as your piece gets taller, uh, especially when you use it to sort of section it on or glue it on like that, be careful pushing in up at the top. You have a lot of leverage. And so usually I try to just work going up and down on something like this. So this clay is still super wet in the middle there. Not super wet, but you just gotta be careful. Um, with the large tools, you can get a pretty big ribbon coming off. Uh, you do have a lot of room on the inside, so it will coil up in there. You can hear that sound pretty well. Here are that changes. Kind of sounds like a piece of cardboard now. And I'm just gonna, I want to leave a little bit more clay on this one. So I'll leave it there and put it out back. Okay, and because this is a larger base. I'm going to have an even taller foot. I'm not going to take a whole lot off the bottom anymore. Maybe one little leveling amount. There. And then I'm going to switch to the 203. So sometimes on the 203, I actually, rather than it kind of intuitive to hold like this and use this front face, but I like to hold it on the side and kind of use my finger up close there again and really use like that much of the corner.
And so you can kind of see the outline of the foot. And then now I just want to remove all the extra clay that I mean I don't need. From the inside, I'll do one final pass. I'll use the hammerhead shape and clean that up. So on this one, I do use like that shape right there, just directly for the inside. And then I'm doing the same thing where I match the inside of the foot to the outside. I know between these two spots is the most amount of clay that I have. So I'm just going to do a couple passes up and down to get rid of that. So if you had to pick one trimming tool, like we were talking about our desert island tools earlier before we oh, did yeah. the broadcast, what would they, what would it be? What would be your, uh, your pick? Probably the T1, honestly, the T1. So I, I always like, it's kind of easy for me just because you could use it to do everything I'm doing. Um, some of these larger tools make it easier, but always, I always recommend the T1. Um, if I got two choices, I'd probably do the T1 and the T201 um, just for some larger stuff. But yeah, between those two, I think you got little corners, you got like a big arc you can do sweeping stuff with. Um, and so, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of always say T1 if someone asks, they don't have any trimming tools, where do they start with? I'll recommend the T1. And if someone's a beginner or they've been doing it forever, I would recommend the T1. So that, that'd be my pick. We've got about a minute left because we got the giveaway. Oh, yeah. or, or else you could keep trimming and we won't give anything away. Nobody wants okay. that. Right, so, <laughs> so, um, so the, the hardest part of this, and it's actually easy to wrap up, is just getting rid of all that clay on the bottom of the foot, which I did. Um, and so now it's just like a couple passes with this to uh, sort of clean up the sides. Um, but then you got it. And so what I'll do is if you don't have, for have time, I'm going to put a little bit of slip on this. And the next time we carve, you can kind of see the finished product. But this is, that's how we got to this point. And so I'll kind of leave it there because I know we got to do the giveaway. We don't want to miss that. Um, but we got to see. Oh, we can go a minute of over. It's all right if you want to. So, sorry, what was that? Oh. I said we could keep if you want to finish, we can go another minute. We can go a minute over. Okay. I don't I, so, I don't want to hold you back. I don't know. Work. So it's looking pretty good. I think the only other thing I would do this that would be important is actually a little bit more of the foot. Um let's pull that in a little bit more. And then use this just to make it round on top. So it just takes a little bit of a little bit of cleanup. We'll get a few of those little place types out of there. Um, but there you have it. So I'll keep it. I'm, I will do some slip later. I'll keep it on for that. Uh, but you can see, I leave. I leave. I don't leave a lot of clay on this just to get that large foot. Um, and there you have it. So yeah. So I think a cup, a bowl, a vase, and I'm gonna get these all prepared, wrap them up really well, and then in a couple of weeks we'll be doing trimming, and we'll try and use some. We'll we'll go over the fine point tools, the X tools. Uh, some regular carving tools. We'll try and hit all of our little carving um, tools and shapes that you can use. And yeah, awesome. of course, if you have any other questions, send them over. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, thank you, Nikolai. Another amazing 
demo as always. Um, so many great tools that you guys have now, all the new ones, the extra small and extra large ones, so fun. Um, we are gonna be giving away winner's choice of a set of either the extra small or extra large right now. And if you, well, if you haven't signed up for our emails and you're not entering our giveaways, so be sure you go to clayshare.com, sign up for our emails. Now, premium members of Clayshare, you are all automatically entered in all of our giveaways, always. You don't have to worry about anything. So that's the easiest way. Just join as a Clayshare member, and then you don't have to worry about it. You're in. It's easy. Uh, no purchase necessary, of course, to enter any of our giveaways. Uh, the replay of this will be available shortly after this ends. So if you're just joining now and you missed any of Nikolai's amazing trimming demo, well, you can watch the replay then and we'll have it up on Clayshare as well as the Clayshare app, Clayshare Facebook page, and my YouTube page as Jessica Putnam Phillips. All right, let's give away the tool sets. So the first winner of the Diamond Core Tool Extra Large or Extra Small Trimming Tool Set, your choice, is Charlotte McGovern. Congratulations, Charlotte. You get to pick. Decisions, decisions. Of course, you could pick one and then you could buy another set. And if your purchase comes to $100, you put the Clayshare combo set in there, use the code Clayshare23, and you get the combo for free. So that's what I would do, personally. I'd get it all. And then I even get the special little combo set. All right, congratulations, Charlotte. We're giving away another prize. So the second winner tonight is gonna be Wanda Turner. Wanda, Wanda, congratulations. You get to pick your choice, extra small, extra large trimming tool from Diamond Core Tools. So a uh, huge thank you to Diamond Core Tools. You know, we're not even halfway through the month yet and we've got three more weeks with them. Next Wednesday, I will be doing a demo using the handheld extruders. I'm gonna be making feet and handles and all kinds of fun things. And then Nikolai will be back with us again in two weeks after that. So you just have to wait for more Nikolai. I know it's hard to do, but you can, I promise. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us here for this fabulous live demo. Remember, you can catch the replay on Clayshare, and if you want more fabulous pottery classes and tutorials, go download the Clayshare app. Do it now. All right, bye, everybody.